so let's get it started. Hello, welcome. Um, this is the talk entitled Beyond Clean Code. My name is Kamil Szymański. I'm a tech lead at Pragmatic Coders. And today I'd like to discuss the topic of software design on the source code level. So something that is not rocket science, in theory. In theory, we should all know it, uh, know how to apply it, follow uh, all the best practices there. Because in theory, if we ask anyone um, on a team, on a project, they should be able to tell what, uh, why uh, we should avoid at all costs uh, accidental complexity, uh, why we should be relentless in removing uh, wrong uh, abstractions, what are the consequences of those, why do we uh, strive for high cohesion law coupling, why should we follow um, solid rules, and this is in theory, because if we start digging, then suddenly even the simplest rules, like, for example, dry, change their meaning. Because dry uh, is all about each piece of knowledge having just a single representation in a code base. And it turns into lack of code duplication. Code duplication is okay. Uh, it's all about not duplicating our knowledge. If we um, ask, for example, about the single responsibility principle, then it turns out that this is all about a component uh, doing just one thing, not as it was supposed to or be, that the component should have only one reason to change, only a single source of requirements. And even if we are lucky enough to have uh, in a project all people that know those rules, um, understand those rules and uh, follow them. Oftentimes, we apply those good rules, we follow those principles only on the low level when uh, designing functions, methods, uh, individual classes, and then we stop. And to have a well-designed project, we cannot stop at that level. We need to apply those on the higher levels, um, on, in modules, components, uh, packages, namespaces, uh, whatever our technology uh, stack has there. And this is something that uh, I will touch on um, in this session. We're going to play with uh, Spring Pet Clinic project. This is an open source uh, project. It has a lot of design smells. We're going to take a look at them. We're going to uh, remove um, some of them, hopefully um, most of them. And we're going to start slow. Uh, we're going to build a story around this code base so that later on we can verify how close or how far from the real reality we were uh, with uh, this story. In the meantime, we'll remove uh, some accidental complexity uh, from the system. And then the real part, uh, the, f the funny part, will begin. We're going to um, tackle context, some subcontexts, and in the end, uh, there will be my favorite part uh, about the naming of uh, higher level concepts. Um, I know that for some uh, the, this might be a bit controversial, so I don't, do not expect uh, for the naming part for all of us to agree on, on that, but uh, I hope that this will be a food for thought, uh, so that after uh, the session, even if you don't agree, uh, you will have a, a double thought uh, about it. So. Having said that, let's remove the uh, slides. This is going to be a live coding or live refactoring session. And let's get started. Um, so uh, we have a Spring Pet Clinic project. And going deeper, um, on the top level, we have a Pet Clinic application. So most probably, this is an, uh, a piece of software that allows to manage some aspect of running a pet clinic. So let's build a story on top of uh, what we can see uh, here. So in our pet clinic, we can book visits. And those visits will be um, handled by veterinarians. But if we move further, there's a module called system. Anyone can guess what a system does, what its, its role in a pet clinic? General stuff, <laughs> yeah. Uh, th this is really interesting. We will, we're gonna uh, dig into that, but let's uh, stay on that level uh, for a second. And then we have the owner of pet clinic. 
So um, this module most probably allows to do some reporting, uh, take a look at how our business is going, like the stuff that the um, owner of that business would be interested in. And then we have a model, uh, which again is a bit surprising, but I guess we've all seen lots of software and we know what hides here. There's gonna be some entities, um, stuff like that uh, here. This is uh, unfortunately a common pattern. So let's start with this mysterious system. What it does, and yeah. We have, have here a bunch of controllers, uh, configuration, and we needed to go into that module to say what it does. And this shouldn't be like that. So let's start fixing that. What I usually do in my um, systems is I divide source code into separate pieces. Um, the core obviously will be the domain, but we also have um, some additional parts. Uh, for example, we, are, we have the boundary there, which is the point uh, of interaction for the users, external systems. This is the part of the software that does no business logic, just does simple uh, validation and delegation into the domain. It just handles events, messaging, uh, HTTP, um, stuff like that. So let's move that uh, to boundary part. And another um, part of the system that I usually have is infrastructure. So those are all the technicalities, um, setting up databases, configuring caching, um, um, saying how to interact with downstream services, um, setting up um, databases connectivity. So once again, let's move it into infrastructure part. And although those are pretty um, important parts of our system, those are not the most important ones. Like, they should be uh, designed well, uh, they should follow clean code, and so on and so forth, but if we have to cut on something, those are the places that we might let go on something. Um, the places that we cannot um, cut corners is the domain itself. Um, this is some, this is the part of the system that we cannot go on any compromises. We need to do it, uh, like this has to be state of the art. So let's move that um, to the domain package. And as said, uh, this has to be state of the art. So we're gonna uh, have to do some cleaning there. And before we jump into the most interesting bits, uh, which is the domain itself, the pet owner, veterinarian visit, we're gonna have to tackle the model. So what we have here is obviously a bit of documentation that, as usual, says nothing. I rarely see any package infos that um, provide any, any useful value to us. And then we have the base entity, I guess, most of us um, have feeling what, what is there, just some identifier, maybe hash codes, two strings, uh, equals, stuff like that. But then we have um, two, two more classes there, named entity and person. So let's start with something simple, named entity. Anyone have a feeling what it can do in a system, what it, its role? Pardon me? Okay, let's check that. And it's unfortunate that we cannot tell that by just uh, looking at the class name. We uh, need to go into the implementation details. And frankly speaking, this is not an object. It's just a data structure. It has no behaviors. But it's there for some reason, so uh, let's check what is the reason. And if we take a look at it, uh, where it's being used, it's the top level of the hierarchy that involves Pet, pet type, and uh, and veterinarian specialty. Uh, and if we take a look at it, specialty, uh, for example, it's just a class that extends named entity. And this is the pattern that will be followed uh, by other types here. So. Let's do one thing. Let's um, apply inline refactoring. So what we're gonna do uh, is uh, we're gonna 
remove um, this named entity and we're gonna duplicate code uh, where it was used and in a second we will see why it's a good thing, why we shouldn't strive for um, such a wrong understanding of um, dry principle. So going back to the specialty, right now um, we have um, the code in line and we can see uh, that, the n that the name was not uh, a really uh, fortunate um, naming convention here because there's, there should be no such thing as a specialty name. We're gonna uh, talk about specialty here. So this should be named specialty. And this is even um, more visible if we take a look at the uh, pet type. Because once again, um, do we have a name here? I wouldn't say so. Uh, this should be called um, species. And by wrongly understanding the dry principle, we create um, unnecessary abstractions, wrong abstractions. We add addition, accidental complexity to the system. So it's harder to maintain it, harder to uh, understand it. The barrier of entrance is uh, higher. Basically, um, none of the good ha things happen and a lot of uh, bad things happen if we uh, do that. And if we move uh, further, we have another uh, data structure here. Because once again, uh, a person, it's not an object. There's no, um, uh, there, there's no behavior here. And if we take a look at where it's being used, it's once again uh, some hierarchy that involves an owner of the clinic, clinic and a veterinarian. And once again, those are two separate roles. They have nothing in common. They just share the same properties of first name and last name. Previously, we've seen that uh, this prevents us from naming things as they should be named. Here, yeah, uh, the first name and last name is okay, but still the hierarchy doesn't ex exist in uh, reality. So, let's remove it as well. I love removing code. Uh, I hope you do as well. And we have the base entity. And as previously said, it just uh, has an um, identifier defined and some method so that says whether it was it's new or not. We're gonna inline it as, as well, and we're gonna see uh, why it was a bad idea to create uh, such an uh, object. By the way, anyone has uh, in their own systems some base entities that define identifiers? Okay, so let's check the specialty once again. Uh, specialty of the veterinarian. And what we have here is not an entity in the uh, DDD lingo. Uh, it's just the um, Java persistence uh, entity uh, in the lingo of um, object rela relational map mapping. Um, this is a value object. It has no life cycle. Um, its identity it, uh, is uh, the object it's itself. Uh, so we shouldn't have a um, separate uh, identifier. What we should have here is the ID de defined here, and this should be removed. Because if we don't do that, then we can have in a system, let's say, specialty uh, dentistry with ID 7 and specialty dentistry with uh, ID 21. Are those, uh, are those two separate specialties, or is it the same? If we try to test it, and this is part of the collection, then those tests start looking nasty because we uh, check some identifiers or uh, sort stuff uh, in, in tests. Basically, we should not generalize um, stuff like that. And by removing those three um, unnecessary abstraction, abstractions, we do not have uh, technicalities um, here defined in the domain, so we can start playing with the business itself. So let's see what we have there. Um, in a visit, we have um, an a visit entity and a visit repository, so um, nothing funky here. If we move uh, forward, we have the veterinarian, uh, which can have a specialty, um, a surgeon, and a dentistry. 
Um, we have a controller, a repository, and we have some vets. Anyone can tell what uh, is the role of vets class here? I wouldn't have a clue, uh, so let's check it. And if we take a look um, at it, the documentation says it. It's part of the marshalling, so it's part of uh, the system boundary. Uh, how do we present data to users or how do we unmarshal it? So checking out where it's being used, it's used only in, um, in the VET controller. So what we can do here is move it closer to the place where it's being used. So let's make it a, uh, an inner class of pet controller. Um. Um. Vet controller, okay. And it starts looking uh, simpler. And then we have this boundary, and we have a controller here. So what I would do is move this controller out to the boundary. But for a second, I will show you a different approach, because not everyone um, likes that. Some people like to keep uh, controllers closer to the business logic. So we can do, do that as well. What we could do is um, move those those previously um, moved uh, controllers into the domain. But right now, this shouldn't be called the domain, uh, because this is domain plus the interaction with the outside world. So what we could do is just uh, rename, rename that to application. And with that, um, with that, we are able to keep our controllers or the system boundary to together with the business logic. What it allows us to do is make most of the stuff um, package scoped. But as said, I prefer to just um, keep it separate, so have it in the boundary. So I would move this controller to the boundary. but. Just for the sake of uh, the things that are g gonna come um, soon, I will just complicate this uh, project uh, a bit more, so I will create a service here. And let's move the uh, controller to boundary. Now, the system is really small, so we could move it to the boundary, or we can uh, start modularizing boundary as well. Um, in small systems, it's a matter of uh, test. It's easy to fix, fix it this later on, because um, chances that we will do it prob probably the first time uh, are not 100% or even 90%. Um, those things in more complicated domains uh, ten tend to change um, often. And looking at uh, this module, uh, this context, uh, everything seems okay or okayish at the moment. Uh, so let's move to the pet um, to pet clinic owner uh, module. And if we take a look uh, at it, we have the uh, clinic owner, um, an owner controller. So let's extract it. But then we have a pet. And I don't know what, what is the relationship of pet and the clinic owner. So let's check it. So we have a pet, and the pet has an owner, and the owner has pets. So it turns out that we are wrong in our initial story, because this is not a clinic owner. It's a pet owner. And by naming this module owner, we added, um, like, we were not specific in enough. So there's a bit of ambiguity. Some will um, interpret it as a pet owner, some, as I did, as a clinic owner. And we should strive to um, be as specific as we can. So this module actually uh, shouldn't be called um, owner. It um, could be called, for example, uh, client. Sounds better. But again, client is not, a, um, not that as specific as we would like it uh, to be. Client, customers, 
it also can have uh, different meanings. So maybe we can um, search for a better name of this context. So looking at it, we have um, here the pet and his owner. So we have two, uh, two contexts here. Which one would be more important for us uh, in terms of uh, our domain? Like the pet, um, yeah, uh, we apply some treatments to those pets, we examine them, uh, we schedule operations for them, and the owner is just a point of contact and someone who pays, who just swipes the credit card, credit card over the terminal. So it looks that in our domain, pet is the um, a more uh, important um, player here, actor in, in the system. So let's call this module pet. Um. What's going on? And with that, we can start further digging into that um, context. Uh, we can separate owner from, uh, from pet. And at this point of time, we can, we can move it to, to owner uh, subcontext. And previously, it was also uh, named owner. But right now, because this is a subcontext of the pet context, we can name it owner because uh, there's no ambiguity. No one would say that this is the owner of the clinic. Um, the context really, really matters. But something is not compiling here. So let's take a look at, uh, at this. And what's the issue here? Um, the issue is that we're trying to uh, set an owner where when adding pet. And if we take um, a look at um, our class um, implementation, we have a relationship to, uh, to pets. And let's check the source of um, the issue. And here we have a protected method to set, set the owner because we have a relationship back to the, um, to the owner. So a pet uh, has relationship to the owner and owner to um, their own pets. And this is a bidirectional -direction, um, relationship. Something that is, in most of the cases, al almost always, a pure evil. Something that we should avoid at all costs because um, it's easy to forget to, or to set something, uh, but it also, uh, this allows us to um, loosely couple uh, all, the, um, all the bits uh, of our system. So one of the top priorities um, that we should uh, focus on right now is to remove this bidirectional um, relationship. But uh, because we are limited in time, we'll just move forward. So uh, we're not going to fix it. we will just uh, make it compile. So we'll make it uh, public. But as said, this should be one of the uh, top priorities of our uh, design uh, fixes. And the owner um, subcontext looks okay. -ish. Uh, let's get back uh, to the pet context. And here we have the, um, the pet, the controller, repository, pet type. And then we have some kind of a, a type formatter. Let's take a look at it. And if we take a look at it, it clearly says that this is part of the MVC um, stack. So it should be um, part of the boundary itself. It should not exist in the domain. Uh, let's take a look at where it's being used. And it's not being used anywhere because uh, Spring just picks it up and um, allows to um, set some formatting. So some might say that this is part of the infrastructure, but it's not. It's not the uh, infrastructure of um, our system. It's just some uh, configuration of the boundary. So although uh, some like to move it to infrastructure, I would be against that. This should live in the uh, boundary. 
so that we um, have uh, all the types in the places that they belong to, uh, the places that they affect. So let's move it to boundary. And then we have um, pet validator um, that has some Java dogs, but um, they don't clearly say um, what where it belongs, so let's just check it. And once again, uh, it's close to the um, controller, so let's just move it there. Uh, it's a pet validator, so pet controller. And then we have a really um, strange place for a visit con controller. Because I would say that a visit controller shou should be closer to the visit context. And for some reason, it's in the pet or previously owner context. Anyone can tell why it was placed or mis misplaced here? Was it um, just someone making a dummy mistake by uh, putting it in the wrong package? Or is there some reason for, uh, for it being here? Any guesses? Yeah, I was thinking about that for, um, for for a while, and I wasn't able to say why it's here. So what I did was uh, just run some inspections, and we will we will do so. Uh, we're gonna run uh, inspection that uh, checks um, package uh, cycles, and if we run it. At that point, uh, we have two uh, two cycles. We have a cycle from pet to the owner, so one, one cycle, from pet to the pet owner and from the pet owner to the pet. Previously, it was uh, not there because uh, it was uh, in a single package. Right now, uh, we've uh, introduced that cycle, but as said, um, this is the top priority thing that we should focus on uh, to remove this bidirectional relationship, and with that, we will uh, remove this cycle. So let's just move this visit controller uh, where it should belong in the uh, previous um, implementation, and let's rerun this uh, analysis. Um, and suddenly we have another cycle. So as you can probably guess, um, there's another uh, bidirectional relationship, which is again a top priority uh, thing that we should uh, focus on. But we already um, touched that um, topic, um, so I will just uh, move along. I will um, complicate this uh, project a bit, so I will just create a service. And I will move the controller to, to the boundary. And Let's start our story from the begin beginning. So we have our uh, pet clinic application, and looking at the top level, it says nothing about the do domain itself. But it separates bits that we are interested in, if we want to learn the system, from the uh, bits that are not so important. In the infrastructure, we usually wouldn't look at. If we want to learn the API, we just go to, to the boundary. But if we are interested in the domain itself, we go there, and then we have the sc screaming architecture that says what um, what we have in the system, what's its purpose, and here we will not make mistakes uh, that there's an owner who can be an owner of the pet or the owner of the pet clinic. Here, uh, the story is super obvious. In our pet clinic, we can book uh, visits to veterinarians for pets, and those pets, by the way, have owners. Um, everything here has its own place. Um, it's really hard to misplace uh, stuff. I know that this uh, project is uh, rather simple, but following those simple rules, because those are simple rules. This is like a uh, single responsibility principle, uh, this is high cohesion low coupling, uh, removing accidental complexity. 
we can do that in uh, really, really complicated dom domains um, with a bit of effort. It's never easy, but it's feasible, and it really pays off. Then it's really easy or, or easy. It's feasible to understand what the system is doing, even for the uh, person that just joins the project. Otherwise, uh, they're going to be lost there for long weeks or even months. But there's one um, other thing that uh, I would like to um, touch on. Um, I will show you this context, and I would like to discuss naming. Would you say this naming is good um, of the classes that we uh, have here or uh, wrong? Can it be better? Would you do something differently? I will give you a second to, to look at it, to, f to think. This might be a bit controversial for some, but uh, I want to do that part so that you, um, you can have uh, some double thoughts about this. So I would say that this is a standard pattern in um, lots of um, our implementations. We have an entity repository service and a con controller somewhere. But is it the lingo that we speak with uh, business? I doubt so. Um, when speaking with uh, domain experts, I don't say that, uh, yeah, I'm looking up um, visits in a visit repository, and then my service does something. By the way, is it an application service, domain service, microservice, what kind of service? Like, those are just some Technical uh, gibberish words, they mean almost um, nothing to domain experts. They do uh, something for, for us, but frankly speaking, we could uh, remove them. I will show you one picture. I don't know if you have um, seen it before. I will give you a second to take a look at it, because it's really, really good. It nails it. Anyone remembers uh, the days of uh, Java Enterprise Edition? All the sel service locators, um, home and remote interfaces, um, abstract proxy, um, factory singlet on something. So fortunately, we were able to uh, get rid of that. But we can do better than that. What would you say if we would remove those technical uh, suffixes like uh, factory, repository, service, um, and so on and so forth? What would you say if we would uh, rename, for example, visit repository to visits? Because we don't speak about repositories with uh, our domain experts. What about service? What does a service do? Can anyone tell what this service does? It does stuff. What kind of stuff? Like, really hard to tell. So how about we would uh, name, it, name it accordingly to what it does? Um, what can a visit, um, visit context uh, be responsible for? It can be, for example, responsible for booking visits. So, um, because we all name things as nouns um, here, so this should be a um, visit booker. How does it sound? Better? Worse? Strange. Uh, I don't think that there's uh, such a thing as booker or um, yeah, we're good at um, doing this stuff and adding some funky words that mean nothing or don't even uh, exist, uh, doing some technical-ish um, attempts to uh, fix the domain uh, lingo. How about uh, that we would um, use a verb to describe it? How about book a visit? Book visit. Looks better? Um, can you repeat? Uh, 
Yeah, uh, that's why I said it might be controversial. Um, but I think th this is um, the way to go, because right now we know what it does. It might look like a method for, for some, but it's hard to um, not say that this actually books visits. It doesn't do some mag magical stuff. It books visits. And as said, um, in the domain, oftentimes we would not nail it uh, correctly the first time. Um, we need to refactor it uh, re uh, all the time. Um, the more we learn about the domain, uh, the more effort we need to put into that. We need to fix all the namings, uh, all, um, all the implementation details accordingly to our latest knowledge about it. So, does um, business use um, the term booking visits or is it scheduling? I don't know, but let's pretend that they use uh, scheduling. So we might, um, again, uh, want to go with uh, visit scheduler. But does it schedule, schedule visits? Or it does some uh, operations on visits uh, accordingly to some schedule, like every five minutes, let's update cache or, <laughs> or whatever. Um, so, once again, let's use a verb here. Yeah, but uh, scheduler, because we, uh, we are used to using those technical uh, suffixes, then so there's a bit of ambiguity here. We do not know whether the scheduler says um, that it's going to schedule visits, or it's going to apply some operation based on the schedule, like every end of the day, send a report to uh, somewhere about the like booked, visit, um, booked visits um, that, at that day. So what we could do uh, is instead of visit scheduler, name it schedule visit. And Looking at this, I would say that this visit suffix is unnecessary here because we are already in the visit context. So we could just name it schedule. And because uh, we are so used to all of those technical suffixes, it starts to look not as um, some service, it looks like an entity. Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, I know. Um, like, for me, um, this is not that hard. But for me, uh, the hard part was uh, to let go on the repository suffix. suffix. It doesn't come easily, um, frankly speaking. But uh, I think we should go into um, that uh, direction. But that was a, a simple context. Let's move to the uh, to a more complicated uh, example, or we'll complicate it a, a bit. So once again, we have a uh, this time vet context, uh, which uh, has a vet, um, vet's uh, specialty, and it has vet's and a vet service, and we'll complicate it um, a bit um, as said. Um, so we're gonna pretend that. It does something that needs to touch um, additional contexts. So how about um, a vet taking a day off? Because then we're, we will need to uh, interact with the visit service, because if a vet takes a day off, uh, we would need to reschedule the visits that were planned for that veterinarian on that day. Uh, we're going to interact with some payroll um, system or uh, HR. So we're going to be uh, touching different contexts. So once again, um, going with the uh, nouns um, pattern, uh, we would name it uh, day of taker. Once again, there's no such thing as a taker. So flipping to, uh, to verb, it would be take day 
off. And because we are interacting with different con contexts, we are creating coupling between them. And I would say that this is not part of the domain itself. We do not have um, taking day of uh, action in the domain itself. It's a use case that interacts with different pieces of um, contexts that we have uh, in our domain. So I would, for a second, I will um, add here a, a suffix use case, but shortly we'll remove it. And looking at this, this doesn't belong here. And what I do in such cases, I move it not to the domain, but to the application. So another um, part of the system that assess or uh, asset, it's not part of the domain itself, those are use cases. So you can call it application, you can call it uh, use cases if, if you wish. But what's important um, here is that this should not contain domain logic. It should uh, orchestrate all the different contexts that are in the domain itself. Uh, so in the implementation, it will be just a delegation, um, some simple ifs or um, applying uh, policies that in interact uh, with um, the vet context, visit context, uh, payroll context, I HR context, and so on and so forth. And as said, uh, we should remove those technical suffixes. And the take, take day off, again, uh, adds a bit of ambiguity. Who takes a day off? A vet, a pet, an owner of the clinic? So what we could do is um, clarify it by uh, saying that vet takes day off. But usually, we will have a lot of uh, those use cases. So maybe we could just remove this vet um, by just modularizing that. So saying what would be the most important um, context here, or uh, what would be the closest um, co context to that use case. So let's move it to vet. And let's remove this um, suffix, because right now there is no ambiguity, because we know in which context uh, are we. OK, so uh, that was the naming part. Um, was this controversial to some of you? Yeah, it is. Uh, it takes time to get used to it. Uh, I, for example, had issues to let go on the repository. Services were easy, but like, I don't know why those repositories uh, came hard to me. Uh, but just it takes a bit of practice, a bit of time, and then it uh, comes naturally. And on a high level, this is uh, all that I prepared for you that I wanted to share with you. Um, so at that moment, I would like to open up for questions, if you have any. Um, in the front, there's one or two. Sure. Thanks. Uh, right. Uh, so remember, in the beginning, we're, we were looking at the um, it was visits or vets. Yeah. The same thing that we kind of have right now. It was a list of something, and we yeah, moved it, to it was the called the vets. Vets. Yeah. Yes, that was a list of veterinaries probably for some serialization or whatever. Um, the problem I see here is we have the same, uh, the same name, the same theme, and when we will see a use case for both of these things, we might get lost in those. So how do we like, possibly could handle this situation? Thanks. So do I understand correctly that uh, you see it problematic that, um, or it's problematic that before something called vets was bad, and now something called vets is okay. Yeah. Uh, and this then is 
something yeah, yeah and that. this is um, really really confusing um, but this should be uh, a problem only if we uh, migrate the existing uh, system or parts of the system from one approach to to the other then yeah this is not not easy we need to remember at what place uh, of the system we are and what is the shape of that uh, place at that moment um, so if we have this duality, yeah, it takes some, some mapping. We, we need to be aware of that. But if we uh, apply it all across um, the system, then um, there's no ambiguity um, then. And frankly speaking, um, for even bigger, like for huge systems, it won't be easy because it will take a lot of time and uh, usually we won't be able to um say that 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 was an investment that was a good good investment at um at that moment so that uh, the um st stakeholders or people that pay uh, would would say yeah it was a good uh, investment it uh, pays off uh, in the longer run but like if the if we have a small or a uh, middle sized system we can do that it doesn't um take days this should uh, be like uh, a couple of hours, maybe two or three, three days, uh, because like this system isn't huge. Um, so I was able to do that in say 40, 40 minutes. But like um, in a middle-sized um, system, if we know it, because we need to know it. If we don't know it, we can do do that uh, for for weeks. But if we know it. This is mostly only renaming stuff, moving it from one place um, to the other. The part uh, that might be a bit challenging is tests. Um, it all depends how the tests are written. Uh, if uh, they do not test behavior, but they test implementation and are really tied to the implementation, that's going to be an issue. If we are testing behaviors, uh, basically, we shouldn't do nothing. Like uh, the IDE will do uh, all the things for, for us: fix the imports, fi fix the, n the naming. Um, but tests are uh, important also from the uh, documentation perspective. So we should also pay attention to uh, method names. Uh, it's yeah, uh, the IDE won't do uh, a good, good job uh, there, um, probably or naming some var variables, but this is something that we can fix uh, like um, o over time. So yeah. Sure, uh, thanks. Okay, thank you. Are there other questions? There's one in the back. Um. Mm, do I get it correctly that basically we are sacrificing this uh, layered uh, like structure, so we kind of sacrifice our navigation in this pro project? For example, say that someone has to support this project, uh, he has no uh, knowledge about the business logic, so how can one see the layers? Like so database and business logic and this old school stuff, I mean. So um, basically, the um, in the layer, uh, you cannot have uh, both uh, the vertical slicing and uh, the um, la technical layering. You have to choose something. And in my opinion, the domain is uh, far more important. Uh, and the um, I have an issue with um, the technical layering. Because um, you separate stuff into uh, persistence, um, some uh, controllers or web, uh, some model, which is entities, some um, services. So you have l highly coupled, uh, highly coupled, and um, not cohesive um, bugs for stuff for for classes so if you are to uh, add a uh, new um, functionality to the to, to the system you basically will uh, touch all the system because you will touch the controllers the services the factories the um, persistence uh, the model uh, basically uh, you need to touch all the uh, packages and here if you want to add some functionality 
you just go uh, where, where it belongs. And of course, it won't be just a single package because if you do um, add a new functionality, you're gonna uh, go into the boundary, you're gonna do some um, infrastructure, but this are uh, gonna be a, a minority of the system because you will have far more domain contexts um, in the infrastructure, you will um, have it also separated into configuration, uh, communicating with downstream services. Uh, so even if there's a bug, you know that the bug is in the context of, uh, let's say, visit. It's not in the context of some service, um, which uh, is like services from visits, vets, pets, uh, HR, payroll, and so on and so, um, so forth. So I would definitely uh, choose um, this approach. OK, are there any other questions? OK, I think there are none. I really recommend you to um, do this exercise on your own. Um, uh, what's okay? Um, the project is uh, open source. It's in a Spring project. Um, Spring projects, uh, Spring Pet Clinic repository. Uh, so try to refactor it. Uh, you might uh, end up in a different place. Uh, it's all about doing stuff better and doing stuff that resonates with you and with your team. Uh, like to uh, have within a project a single approach, not that I do it uh, that way and my uh, fellow mates do it uh, differently. Um, so uh, yeah, try try this. Um, try to have a double thought about the naming. Um, what I showed you is not the best way to, to do that or the correct way, because there's no such way as a best way or correct way. It's just one of the approaches. But um, just give it a, uh, a second thought. Maybe uh, it will improve uh, something in your project. So um, I hope that you find it useful, that you've learned something. And I would like to thank you for your attention and wish you a great rest of the conference. Thank you.